What's going on, beautiful people? Welcome back to another episode of the After You Cast. Today, we've got a very special guest who I'm very excited to have a conversation with. It's going to be good because there's a lot of similarities there. And, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, in terms of what we're doing. So without further ado, would you please introduce yourself to the Thank people? Thank you. Hello, guys. My name is Drusilla and I work for a group called Rhythm in Britain, short for R&B. Hint in the name. I like that. I like that. It's a little smooth as well. Yeah, I like just a little teaser. <laughs> yeah, Do you know it's funny when you said when I saw that you were working with Rhythm in Britain, yeah. I was like R&B. Like, it makes a lot of sense because obviously yeah. it's R&B nights. Yeah. Smart, smart, smart. Yeah. So yeah, thank you, Jacinda, honestly, for coming on. Thank you for having me. This okay. is a um, great opportunity to talk with somebody who's in the similar type of field. Mm. You know what I mean? Like hosting events. Yeah. Hosting events. I mean, that's something we're definitely going to get into, but. Before we jump into the exciting stuff which we're currently working on, we're going to take it back in time a little bit. Okay. And start wherever is comfortable for you. We want to give the audience a little opportunity to find out who you are. So, mm. you tell us a little bit about who Drusilla is and kind of how you got into what you're doing. Oh, okay. Drusilla is a very complex person. <laughs> um, born and raised in Spain, originally nice. from Equatorial Guinea. Wow. now living in the UK. Amazing. Um, I am a person from a very big family, very mixed family, mm -hmm. who love celebration, love being together, but most importantly, love music. Mm. Um, and that is where my sort of love for music came from. You yeah. know, we have a lot of reggaeton, we yeah. have a lot of Afrobeats. Mm. Even with, with Afrobeats, we have the Nigerian, we have the Ghanaian, we have the Ecuadorian, we have the Congolese, we have everything. Wow. And also my mum was a big, big R&B fan lover mm -hmm. so you know yep. Saturday mornings we had a bit of you know a bit yeah, of Joe a bit of, you know, we had a lot of R&B music in the mornings mm. and yeah that's when, that's when I was like you know what I, I really love music I'd, mm. I'd love to yeah in fact not love to but I just love being around people who love music and yeah. listening to music it makes me feel good I love yeah. the creativity from it and mm -hmm. yeah that's where the love came from really amazing yeah. I mean that's so unique to have um somebody born in Spain who I've met oh. many people born in Spain, especially <laughs> yeah. coming like, from where you come from. It must be mm. such a unique perspective. Yeah. Um, growing up with that Spanish culture mixed with the, you know, yeah, the black culture the, yeah. and that music, and yeah. that must be such a vibrant upbringing, yeah. I can imagine. It was uh, fun. <laughs> it was very, very fun. It was very, very fun. <laughs> Definitely. So yeah. how did you kind of make those steps towards doing or being involved in music? Well, actually, it was by accident mm -hmm. um, and just pure coincidence. Um, I always say mm -hmm. uh, your friends are also your, your networking buddies. Uh -huh. um, and I'm very blessed to have really cool and creative friends mm -hmm. who have passions of their own, but also are people who share their passions um, with each other, with myself. Yeah. Um, and a friend of mine um, mm -hmm. called James, he was initially involved in Rhythm of Britain. Mm -hmm. I used to go to the shows yeah. um, every now and then, went to their first award show. I loved it. I loved what they were doing. Yeah. Um, I always said this is something I'd really love to be involved in, but I never really knew how what to part, yeah, how to get involved in and where I would see myself involved in. Yeah. Um, so he'd be like, you know, what? Just, just come to the studio. Just mm. come, come check it out. Cause mm. he did a radio show as well. Okay. Come listen, come see it out, come feel it out and tell me what you think. Mm -hmm. And yeah, a point in my life where I was just going through a lot of decisions about mm -hmm. jobs and career-wise, mm -hmm. I just thought, you know what? Mm -hmm. Let me just go in yeah. and see what happens. Yeah, like yeah, the yeah. worst that could happen is they say you haven't got enough R&B knowledge to get out. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I did have enough, so it was yeah. good. Mm -hmm. um, and they were all really welcoming people. And mm. I was like, you know what? I think as I go in there, mm -hmm. even without a plan, mm. and I'm someone that always has a plan, mm -hmm. without going in without a plan. You sort of find your sort of area where you can sort of fit in. They see it themselves, and then you just at one point even form forming your own sort of little role. Yeah. Since I've recently gotten into doing the events and stuff, like it's yeah. completely different. Yeah. Like, understanding, you know what I mean? And it's great. I really advocate for young creatives to mm. collaborate with musicians and uh, also work towards looking at different ways you can get into industries because sometimes yeah. we get trapped into the one lane. 100%. Like, I have to be the artist, I have to be the athlete. 100%. And there's so much of, yeah. that supports both of those roles that we could get into, which yeah. we just don't even know about. So yeah. tell us a bit about the events and like working behind the scenes mm. for Rhythm and Britain. 
Um, it's sometimes a bit up and down, um, sometimes very busy. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, luckily, I don't mind busy um, mm -hmm. as long as there's structure, and that's one thing that Rhythm and Britain are very good at mm -hmm. structure in terms of who needs to do what, mm -hmm. um, when it needs to be done by. Yeah. Um, but there's always very open communication. We're always dependent on each other, leaning on each other, asking mm -hmm. each other for help. Yeah. Um, and with that, we have shared documents. We have, nice. um, yeah, we just have a lot of resources around us that's always available for us to, to pick on, to choose, to mm -hmm. share yeah. if we need help. Because with events, especially, we know mm. things are always changing last minute. Yeah. Um, there's always new people coming in, new mm -hmm. people coming out. Absolutely. And you always need as much help as possible. Mm. You cannot do things on your own. Um, Agreed. <laughs> I've learned it the hard way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you always need people to help you, and it's good that even though we're, we're a small team, we all individually have really strong talents mm. that successfully we've been able to put together and has allowed us to create. Each other. Yeah, we've complemented each other really, really nicely. Mm. And we've been able to pull off some really cool events. Yeah. Um, and it just only showcases, you know, our skills, our mm -hmm. personality, but also just how we're willing to work together as a team. So, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, in recent times, I noticed that a lot more people want to come outside a bit more. Mm. And yeah. that need for people to connect and collaborate is like, yeah. it's, it's always been there. It's 100%. just, I think social media has taken us away mm. from um, just those personal one-to-one -one engagements, conversations, building relationships. Yeah. Um, it's something that I see coming back a little bit more and mm. it's interesting that you can see it in the music. Music is a great reference point to kind mm -hmm. of see, test the temperature of where people are at, where the, you know, the community, society is at. Mm. And yeah. I notice a lot more R and B, soul, mm. yeah. jazz fusion yeah, music like, is like I love that like Alpha Mist and yeah, yeah. you know what I mean uh, Mansell Brown. And mm. You're seeing a lot more eclectic, collaborative artists who are like taking styles that you know, our parents yeah. kind of listen to. A lot mm -hmm. of classical, traditional music, well, yeah. traditional but um, instrumental. Mm -hmm. You know, that, so you're seeing that come and be blended and, then, yeah. and a lot of the new artists and stuff are, are flipping 100%, it in unique ways. 100%, yeah. Tell us a little bit about the challenges because I know I have some. <laughs> uh, it's, it's hard, it's hard. For anyone um, who's out there, events is hard. But. Yeah, it's uh, events, yeah. It's something you've got to keep a brave face sometimes about, especially with some of the challenges. Mm. I'd say the main one is just, as I mentioned before, the mm -hmm. constant changes yeah. whether they're for the better or the worse yeah. um and just always keeping level-headed mm -hmm. um obviously the bigger you are mm -hmm. um the more help you would get as well and yeah. the bigger events you host our award show um mm -hmm. which went really really well i'm yeah. so so glad of the team and, mm -hmm. and everyone that was involved with that mm -hmm. um it took a lot of time it took a lot of months in planning mm -hmm. and um Sometimes I do like things to happen quite quickly, yeah. especially when I already have a plan set. Yeah. Um, but just sitting and understanding that, sitting and understanding, sorry, that, mm -hmm. you know, there's this one thing is going to have to take three months. This one thing is going to have to take four months. This one thing is going to have to take, you know, a couple of months before there's actually a foot in, yeah. let alone of the whole body in for us to actually make a decision with those people. And yeah. it's it's tough. It really does test your patience. Yeah. It really, really does test your patience. It tested my patience mm. a lot of the time as well. So um, I think it was it was hard for me personally, but just because it was something I, was un I wasn't used to. Mm -hmm. It was an uncomfortable sort of position I had to put myself in for the better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, hopefully it doesn't have to be a challenge now. Now that, mm -hmm. now that I've experienced it, mm -hmm. um, and again, now that I've had people that have reassured me that, you know, the end goal is there. It's just yeah. the journey. You've got to really, you got to feel through the journey yeah. and, and go through it. But yeah, that, that was quite difficult, I'd have to say. Yeah, that, that journey, the journey is a story. Mm. Yeah, you know, that, <laughs> it, it's that essence of yeah. time investment. Mm. And I always harp on about this on the pod, but the audience of people who watch your pod will know it's, mm. it's like a broken record. <laughs> but, you know, honing in mm. on your craft or what you do takes so much time. Mm. And regardless of what field you're in, what sector you're in, it takes more time than you think. Yeah. And that's usually the barometer. It's usually it takes much more time than you think to gain a client, to win a customer, convince mm. somebody. Um, and we have such short term you know <laughs> like attention spans are so short now yeah. so i think what you have an issue of is 
people not being patient enough, like you said. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was one of them. <laughs> I was hard, one of them, it? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And I, I just think that we're constantly told that, you know, passion doesn't make money, passion, mm. you know, you don't want to chase your passion because, you know, you're probably not going to make enough money or survive off of it. You know, you need to do things that are more practical. Yeah. Agreed. There, mm. You know, we, we need to be realistic. 100%. I don't, I don't think that we should veer away from things we're passionate about. I think that we should be realistic. Is mm-hmm. this going to potentially make me enough money? Am I willing to invest mm. in it enough to make it make yeah. some money? So... I think that I try to advocate and push people in that direction because I know if they invest enough time in mm. themselves, you can do anything you want. Mm, you can do 100%. anything. You know, and, 100%. And it's that patience yeah. of dealing with like people not getting back to you, yeah. you know, canceling <laughs> last minute. I yeah. do have enough people going to attend the event. It's, yeah. it's a constant Even stress. Even that, that, I think as well with the whole people attending events, that sometimes becomes more of a priority mm. than what the main event is actually about. And, yeah. you know, it's, yeah. it's understandable. You, mm-hmm. you want as many people to be in the event as possible, yeah. to enjoy what you want to enjoy, to feel how you feel about the, the event or yeah. passion that you have. Mm-hmm. Um, and when, you're, when you get less than what you expected, it just, you know, it, it can tough. affect you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough, tough mm-hmm. but it's as easy as it is. Mm-hmm. Um, you really just got to remember. Tell us the feeling, started. just as you mentioned that, tell us the feeling of like going through that though and coming out on the other side. Because I think mm. that's not spoken on enough. You know, sometimes we talk about the difficulty, the challenge yeah. is hard, it's hard. But the breakthrough, mm-hmm. you know, like talk to us about that. Yeah. That... Do you know what? The breakthrough comes through the response I get. Like mm. you can get a hundred no's, you can get a hundred negative comments. Mm. But me personally, if I get one comment mm. that feels genuine, that feels honest, mm. that comes with the same passion I have yeah. and comes with a relationship on top of that, that alone just feels very, it just feels very overwhelming. It feels mm. very fulfilling. Yeah. And I've happened, that's happened in the past where I've been involved in an event where mm-hmm. the numbers weren't as high as I expected it and it, it yeah. sort of put me down um, yeah. I've had for that a too. while. Yeah, it did. It, we're humans, it, it gets it's us natural. down. It's yeah, natural. I was like, you really want something and it's just like, oh, yeah. gosh, yikes. Mm. But um, yeah, just based on from feedback, mm-hmm. um, of the people that did come yeah. and just how they felt. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? I really li- like, I'm really glad that you That's enjoyed it. Yeah, because mm-hmm. it just makes you want to do it again and again oh, and again and mm-hmm. just do something even bigger. Yep. So yeah, I mean, numbers, you can expect one people, you can expect 100 people, you could mm-hmm. expect 12. Yeah. But as long as those 100 people, 12 people, one people love what you're doing and are the right audience, mm-hmm. that should be the main priority and the main, mm-hmm. just the main goal. And Agreed. Go, yeah. Agreed. I mean, as you were speaking, it made me think about um, like an analogy. I kind of think of it like, you know, when you go to the mm. theme park, mm-hmm. anyone who's been to Thorpe Park, Alton Towers, anyway, mm. you're waiting in that line, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Usually I'm the one holding the bags, you're but yeah. in that line. Yeah. <laughs> Your legs yeah. are sore by the yeah. time you get to the front and you're just like, oh, God, go on then. Yeah. And then you get on and the thrill of the ride yeah. is enough for that mm. three hours you waited for, you know? And, you know, we may complain, we, we may moan about things, but mm. the reality is life is very much like that too, I think. Mm-hmm. Our goals are like that. You're waiting mm. in a line. Like, mm. no one's expected to get things. You should drop your expectations mm-hmm. and just release them. Because yeah. the moment you expect, it's like you stopped, you stopped working. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like once I expect, ah, oh, this is just going to happen. Mm. It's like, are you going to put as much time and effort in now? Because mm. that expectation kind of overrides it. You yeah. Know? So... Yeah, completely get that. Um, yeah, 100%. Because of your background and your culture, because I know you mentioned about growing up in Spain, what mm. what was that like? Of, was, it, was, you, <laughs> was you there for a long period of time or was it... Uh, no, no, I was still... I moved to, to the UK when I was very, very young still. Okay. So um, my family still only spoke Spanish. Um, obviously, it was, I was learning mm. English and they were kind of learning English at the same yeah. time. So... Yeah. Um, but yes, Spanish is still very much involved in my ham- family yeah. till this day. Absolutely. Um, I'd say just because of how Spanish music makes you feel, mm-hmm. um, how you listen to it, how you dance to it, mm. how my family dances to it, yeah. um, just the characters and the mannerisms. Mm-hmm. I personally love it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think just because of that, especially mm-hmm. the instruments, I'm, mm-hmm. I love the sound of the guitar. Uh, I yeah, love, yeah. love, if I hear a guitar, a little yeah. guitar solo, uh-huh. 
in a song, yeah. you've, you've won me, you've taken me already. <laughs> I'm, I'm sold. I'm absolutely sold. Getting serenaded so, um, with the guitar. Yeah, oh, 100%. Over. 100%. Right, <laughs> <take notes. laughs> but um, yeah, so for me, over the years, I'd started to notice certain instruments were more common yeah, yeah. in certain genres with the, the Spanish feel was more the, uh -huh. the, the soft drums and the, the yeah. guitar. Yeah. Um, in Afrobeats, it was more the, the heavier drums. Yes. Um, in, um, Deep bass drums and stuff 100%, like that. yeah. Just noticing the little differences and mm -hmm. sort of how even they can even intertwine, how they can, yeah. How they can I, mix, right? 100%, yeah. I started to notice the little things. So yeah. As I grew up, I got a bit more, yeah, wary. Of... You know, growing up, um, my background is um, listening to parents' music is very mm. much like a lot of reggae, like you mentioned. Oh, nice, yeah. Um, but also a lot of jazz, a lot of soul. Ooh. Yeah. And um, it blends into a lot of the music I like now, and I think mm. it's character forming. Mm -hmm. You know, the kind of music your your parents listen to. Yeah. I think not only does it um, mm -hmm. set your style of music that you like, it also, mm. I think, sets your character a little bit. Yeah. Because the kind of music will kind of flow with you. Like, mm. for example, now, um, because I listen to so much jazz from my parents and stuff. Oh, nice. Fast forward, yeah. I now love jazz. I now love like the Alpha Mists and the Mansell Browns. I love that, yeah. The Masegos who's doing a bit yeah. of jazz fusion. So mm. it's crazy how fast forward, I'm sure if you spoke to them, they'd probably say a similar thing. They remember yeah. their parents listening to the records and the vinyl yeah. and stuff, right? So, yeah. so we've much. We've got to thank our parents for that as well, actually, we do. as well. Because we do. even talking about it now, I'm just thinking because my dad, he loves R&B as well, but he also loves jazz mm. music. My mum was, you know, Afrobeats yeah. and R&B and reggaeton. Yeah, yeah. All those different fusions and mixes mm. for me and my brothers. You know, we've now grown up loving this music and yeah. it's all just because of what they play in the house. And yeah. thank you, mum. Thank you, dad. Uh, yeah. you got to thank him, honestly. No, yeah. thank you so much. Character yeah. forming. 100%. Yeah. In a positive way as well, too. And yeah. that's why I love, you know, quote unquote, good music, because mm. I don't think there's good or bad music, but... Mm. Um, I think we like to attribute the title good to like good feel mm. music, where mm -hmm. it's like uh, the tone is un universal, yeah. um, you can appreciate it yeah. no matter what you look like. And mm. I think jazz is definitely one of those categories, R&B mm. as well. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? So, and mm -hmm. that's part of the reason why I wanted to get you on today is because, mm. you know, we're both doing that hosting arm of things and yeah. battling through trying <laughs> to get people to come outside. And yeah. it's, it is a challenge because I think we've been wrapped up in these mm. doing that and I think conversations are just the real key to unlock things yeah you know no, I mean? especially when they like they're literally there in the flesh like in person and you can actually have conversations with yeah. them like I, mm -hmm. I love that aspect of them I mean even with some of our shows even mm -hmm. though there's a lot of performances and live music and instrumentalists yeah, yeah. the audience themselves they're not only filled with music lovers they're, yeah. they're filled with producers they're filled with other artists they're yeah A&Rs they're just for yeah. people from or it could just be someone that walked past the venue and heard the music and it's true just wants to come inside they just, yeah, they have, the vibe. Mm -hmm. yeah it's more the conversation that yeah. comes from it yeah. and with that conversation the relationship that you get from it like I've, yeah. I've made such lovely relationships recently mm. with people that I've met from December mm. from recently that I've joined with them in Britain yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah, I'm just so grateful, really, really grateful. I've seen companies do it before, like I've worked for companies and they mm. kind of, especially the higher you go, especially in corporate, it tends mm. to be they use them as a great marketing tool because mm. a great opportunity to <laughs> outreach, makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. But I've been to so many that are just, they feel like, uh, like an event. Mm. You know, it's, yeah, a, it's yeah. weird to say, but you know yeah, what I mean. It's, no, I feel yeah. It feels too rigid, too structured. Yeah. Where everyone's wearing a lanyard and holding their drink. <laughs> oh and, yeah, I've been to a couple know, of those. Pretending to, to <laughs> you know, what's... true. Just waiting for the next target. It's just being yeah, there. yeah, and you're just yeah. like heads on a swivel. Like who do I talk to you next? And yeah, I think there's. I I just like the changing the format, mm. changing the styling of like just simple things. Like in my events, I like to have conversational time, more conversational time than. Mm structure and then in 20 minutes we're going to do this and then mm. an hour we're going to do that yeah i think it's nice to have that bit more of an informal structure because i've realized people just love having conversations mm. so like yeah. trying to structure it sometimes too much can yeah. kind of take away from just the end of the, the, the networking yeah in sense of, how's the styling and the layout for like mm. a ribbon and britain or one of your events that you host we so with our uh, lookout show mm -hmm. um that one is more for upcoming artists nice. and it's usually much more of a local show okay um but it's a lot more intimate as well which i really really love yeah um they start off with a very heavy structure mm -hmm. um but i think we realized we want it to be a bit more personal um, we didn't want to just yeah. create a stage for an artist to come mm -hmm. perform, 
leave, come perform, yeah. leave. That conveyor belt. Yeah, it, it needs to. We need to get to know them a little bit more. Agreed. And we've, over time, we've just seen how a lot more conversations, even on stage, have happened with the mm. artists. Mm. Um, been a lot more gay. People mm. have been very interactive. One thing I will say mm -hmm. to some of the Rhythm and Britain fans, audiences, people that come to the lookout, yeah. the audiences. Mm. Amazing. Yeah. The, their engagement with the artists and the artists as well. I, yeah. That's what I really, really love because after a while I'm just like, you know what? I'm not even look at the time because this just feels very genuine, yeah. authentic and real. And just it's people that genuinely want to be here and are really enjoying themselves. Yeah. You know, it's it's away from the structure mm -hmm. and more enjoying the moment. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. what it's become a lot more with the, with the lookout, especially because it's nice. so intimate. Yeah. So what's the, what kind of style is the lookout? What as obviously I know you mentioned for like mm. up and coming artists. Is it mm. like they come perform um, like on stage? Pretty of? much, yeah. So um, if you are first of all the Rhythm and Britain, we mm. focus on UK artists only, yeah, nice. just because we feel like they need they need the the, the light, push. the, yeah, the push, the stage. They need everything. They yeah. need the, as much support as they can get, and we're out here mm. supporting as much artists as we can. That's good. Um, so yeah, if you're an up and coming R and B artist. Mm. Um, alternative R&B, soul, mm, um, nice. so we'll open it now because R&B is becoming a bit more open. It is, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, any of those artists would pretty much just say, you know, feel free to come to the lookout. Nice. Um, if you have any songs as well, it's a mm. good opportunity to come and uh, test your songs out, mm -hmm. get your audience engagement yeah. um, skills up there and just sort yeah. of see who's really out there yeah. to listen to you, mm. you know, because it's one thing having listeners on social media and having followers, um, people liking, reposting, commenting, mm -hmm. etc. It's another thing being in front of an audience. Um, back in the days, if they didn't like you, they were very vocal about it. Yeah, very, right. very vocal. Yeah, you're right. So, it's got a bit nicer. It's got a bit... Oh, I think we're, I think we're even too nice. Yeah, we're a bit too it. nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's we're, true. we're a bit too nice. But um, yeah, no, just giving them the opportunity to experience that. Yeah. Um, yeah in this yeah, stage yeah. is what we're here for. Mm -hmm. you know? And just to, as well as having a stage. Mm -hmm. Having us, mm. you know, as friends, yeah. as people to just, you know, mm. give you a ring how are things going, mm -hmm. do you need on the stage, do you need to be introduced to this person? Yeah. We've got them here. Like yeah. just sort of creating that sort of environment, open environment where they mm. can they can be seen and they feel like they are being taken care of. Yeah. Yeah. Again, highlighting something is just really good there mm. is um, the mindset for you guys and mm. like the togetherness. Because yeah. I've realised that as well too. My first couple of events, I was kind of doing most of it myself. Mm. And um, now, shout out to Sounds Media Group, um, mm, yeah. who I've partnered with. So we have set SMG Live now. So for the events, we have this teamwork. Yeah. You know, Which is really good. That. You guys should go and watch, by the way. Yeah, one. for sure, yeah. for sure. We're doing good stuff, man. <laughs> Sounds Media Group, shout out to yes. you guys. Um, yeah. Like you said, team, mm -hmm. because sometimes we get wrapped up in providing yeah. the, the, the opportunity, the platform for the people, and we forget that you know our mindset and keeping each other popped up sometimes is the difference. Mm. Because I think one thing I've realised in working with good people is your mindset whilst you're doing the work. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like I yeah. think that matters. I think sometimes we worry about the end product and what we're going to produce, and we forget that journey is the story, yeah. right? So if it's a terrible journey. Are you mm -hmm. going to want to go on it again? <laughs> yeah. Because a lot of life is cycles and we go mm. back around and we repeat things we enjoy. Mm. So if it becomes a situation where we're not really injecting that love, that creativity, yeah. passion into each other, yeah, we're going through it and then it becomes run of the mill, like you said, conveyor belt style, right? Yeah. So, yeah, no, it's good to hear that mm. you guys care not just about putting on the opportunity, but also working together and yeah. checking in on each other and 100%. stuff too. 100%. Listen, the UK is a small, as, as big as we are, as mighty as we are, we're a small mm. country. That's it. <laughs> so, um, we've got to we, help we, each other. Yeah, we've got, we got to help each other if yeah. it's locally, mm. if it's up in the Midlands, if mm. it's down south, you yep. know, we're still in the UK. Yeah. You know, because we, we don't want to hear another post saying UK R&B is dead and we're not supporting. Yeah, man. We, yeah, we're yeah, here, yeah, you know, it's yeah, just, yeah. we got to, sometimes we've got to hold ourselves accountable as well. It's we've true. got to see what we're actually doing, yeah. you know. Yeah. Are, you, are you actually helping, sir? Mm -hmm. You know, not only starts from yourself at the end of the day. It's true. That's yeah. true. We love pointing fingers. And yeah, we love you know, fingers. true. Um, the less we list, the less we can do that, I think, the better, yeah. the better. Are you doing or you would you like to get into other types of events as well? Because I know, obviously, mm. as a host, you're involved in mm. probably a lot of different pies, fingers in pies and stuff. So um, what do you personally see yourself So doing? with me, uh, the thing is, I've always been one to help in any way as possible. Mm -hmm. um, 
luckily, like we already have our established high school rhythm in Britain, so mm -hmm. I've taken the step to do more the management stuff nice. of the events behind the scenes. That's good. And I with like all that. the skills that I've gotten from that, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think, you know, I feel like I could do this somewhere else as well, you know, just dibble dabble. So I'm always here to help mm -hmm. um, other groups, yeah, yeah. Um, other groups that have passion yeah. as well, that have that have a goal, yeah. um, but also a, a team because yeah. I do love working in, in the team. Yeah. I really, really value feedback. Yeah. I really value feedback, even when I don't want to hear it. <laughs> yep. I have to swallow and just be like, you know what, it's gonna, mm -hmm. it's gonna come in handy. Mm -hmm. So um, no, definitely anywhere where I can be involved in a team that want to support each other, want to support the platform or in a, a community that they're involved in. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely, definitely done. I mean, usually if I'm not doing um, Rhythm and Britain working, mm -hmm. I'm usually at the local food bank as well. And like, that's okay. another place where they're just, the teamwork, that's just the dynamic. I really, really love, yeah. really, really love it. And yeah. giving back is, um, yeah. is, is a power. No, honestly, I, power. I really love it. You, again, you meet some really cool people there. Yeah. You meet some really lovely, wonderful people that you just, that are grateful to you, but if anything, I'm grateful to them yeah. for just having those conversations. Mm -hmm. and it just makes me think, you know what, I need to, need to put myself out there a bit more and just try new things. So yeah, yeah I'd, I'd definitely be open to, you know, collaborating. And do yeah, collaborating, you know. Yeah, for sure. No, no, I'm glad you said that, because yeah. I mean, yeah, that's that's one thing that I'm open to as well too. Like, it'd be yeah. great to, I know we're talking behind the scenes about collaborating on some stuff. So yeah, no, definitely. It, it's important to, to reach out and meet others as well. And mm -hmm. part of the reason why I do what I'm doing is mm. um, I'm always meeting people, whether it's through the photography and the video work or mm. the podcasting. So, yeah, collaborating, meeting new people and seeing mm. where you can like build and create new things. Yeah. It's like <sighs> there is enough room for all of us to be successful. Yes. You know, I think there's this stigma 100%. against like there's a percentage rate of success where mm. like you don't quite fit in that category. Mm. So don't worry about it. It's mm. like, no, no, no. Every person has a capability if they execute the right way and have good people around them. 100% mm -hmm. and what you value as success as well. That's you it. Know, you yeah, mindset's different. You could different, be right? making millions and... It's not enough for you. It, it literally wouldn't be enough or, yeah. or it's not something that you actually enjoy, you yeah. know, is, is that successful? So, mm. yeah, it, it really depends, but mm. there definitely is everyone. Well, I think we find out those things or the answer to those questions more mm. by talking to people, innit? Yeah. So when you come out, you can find out more about yourself. Mm -hmm. I think the problem is why living inside and kind of in a bit of a shell Mm. I think the issue is you're maybe learning about yourself and spending time with yourself, mm. but you don't have anyone else to judge yourself against. Yes. If that makes sense, you know? Mm. So like, even in this conversation, mm. we're going back and forth and unlocking or highlighting things about what we're doing and what we're yeah. passionate about. It kind of affirms what you already know. Yeah. And then it makes you think about things that you didn't think about. Yeah, true. That, that's, that's really what I think conversation, the power in it is. Yeah. Well, before we leave the beautiful people, um, I always like to leave words of wisdom, mm. which is a recurring theme on the on the platform, which is where we just basically get the guests to give their little bit of words of wisdom towards a younger version of themselves. So what would you say to the younger version Ooh. of Drusilla? Uh, one thing just popped into my head, and it's something that I've been saying to myself recently, actually. I wish I could have told the younger Drusilla, mm -hmm. which is live a life, don't just be alive. Mm. Um, yeah, I mm. think obviously as we get older, we're very, very <laughs> focused with what could potentially happen, mm. what we want to do, where we want to be. Mm -hmm. um, and we're young, it, it happens, those decisions just, it, it can put us in a bad place yeah. mentally, of just how we make those decisions and expectations we have on ourselves from other people. Yeah. It's a lot, it's a lot. But I think as we mentioned before, it's mm. about the journey. Yeah not rushing, mm -hmm. sometimes being patient, sometimes keeping quiet and just being like, you know what, mm -hmm. let me just write it through. Because mm -hmm. if I'm going to look back and think of the journey, I mm -hmm. want to at least think that, I look back and think that it was something a bit enjoyable. You know, even though it had some bad times, yeah. I did enjoy this, mm -hmm. or I, I was involved in this, or I had this conversation with that person that mm -hmm. today has benefited me in a good way. Yeah. So um, yeah, just, just live a life. Yeah, just yeah. live a life of something. Mm -hmm. Don't just be alive, mm -hmm. you know, just do something worthy, yeah. That's powerful. Yeah. No, I really like that. I like that. And, um, <laughs> honestly, I came up with that as well, you know, I came up with it. I love that. Yeah. I love that off the top, yeah? <laughs> just uh, off the top of my head. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so, yeah. Natural, organic conversations, it just brings, I think it brings the best out in people. Mm. Um, you know, so, yeah, I'm excited to see more of what you're doing over the next few months for sure. And, um, yeah, 
guys, keep your eyes peeled because I'm sure there are going to be some some great collaborations through some cool networking events, opportunities. And Definitely. That's the thing. I think um, networking events springboard mm. into so many places. Um, yeah. It may just be a simple get together. Yeah. It doesn't need to be fancy. It doesn't need to be like, you know, go spend loads of money, yeah. um, which is another thing I just wanted to highlight real yeah. quick, which is you don't need to spend a lot of money um, at mm. events. A lot of people yeah. think like, what do I need to give people? Do I need to prepare this, spend all this? Honestly, how you think about what you're trying to provide to mm. people is more important. Yeah. So while they're there, like what type of what type of value are you trying to give to them? Are you teaching, educating, entertaining, like whatever mm. it is, um, just focus in on that. Yeah. Because people aren't really, they don't really care about the trinkets and oh, getting a small little goodie bag at the yeah. end. At the end of the day, they walk away, they remember the opportunity, the experience, mm. you know. And um, I definitely can see that you guys are you're building that on your side. So mm. if we can bridge that link, make it stronger, inspire other people to do the same. Definitely, yeah. yeah. That's what it's all about, yeah. isn't it? No, but, definitely. Um, anything you wanted to share with the beautiful people about, um, oh, of course, we need to find out where you're at. So oh, share yes. your... Yes, Your yes, information. yes. Um, I am on all socials. It's drusilla.pons, D-R-U-S-I-L-A mm -hmm. dot P-O-N-S. Mm -hmm. um, under Rhythm and Britain, that's Rhythm in Britain mm -hmm. as well on all social media platforms as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah, feel free to drop me a message. Um, tell me how you are and maybe we can talk. Yeah. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Well, yes. it's been a good time having a conversation with you. Thank you, and, you um, too. It's been a blessing. Um, the lovely Drusilla. Ladies and gentlemen, um, it was you. a pleasure getting to sit down and hear a bit more of your story. Likely that we're going to see a lot more of her, whether it's through work we're doing on the other side or mm. even getting you back on the platform again, because mm. these conversations are very meaningful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. No, from very a year's meaningful. time from now, I'll tell you something else that extra happened. And we'll be like, oh, wow, this happened since that's last it. time we spoke. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's the but best yeah. part. This has happened, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, then you're just like, remember we talked about that yeah. and then now and then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, that's... double, that's happened with double. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, yeah. Best prayers um, and wishes for all of um, the you. endeavors into the future. Go and follow the lovely Drusilla and check out Rhythm and Britain. Whatever you're doing, whatever you're passionate about, mm. stay focused, stay committed to it, you know, because it takes much longer than you think to actually make it happen. But when you do, it will far outweigh the time it took to get there. Mm. So, pleasure, blessing, and Thank um, you. we look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Peace and love. <laughs>